Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I've got a very special video. In today's video we are going to learn how to put our custom FPV logo on Betaflight. I know this is super awesome and I'm super excited and it comes with Betaflight 4.2. It literally just came out. So if you want to be able to do this, you do have to download the latest configurator and you have to download the latest firmware. And if you don't know how to do that, I literally just made a video on it. I will link that video down in the description. Go ahead and watch that video, get updated. Unless you know how to do it, then go ahead and do it on your own. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to first how to make your logo because if you don't make it properly then you can't use it and once we learn how to make it I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up and then after we set it up we're gonna take off to the sky let's go oh, oh. alright pilot so the first thing you need to do is jump in here and I want to show you on the Betaflight 4.2 release candidate one if we scroll down to majors minors minor features right here added the option to display the osd logo on arming that means it's not just your first plugin literally every time you arm your logo will pop up and that is sick and the very next thing is added support for enhanced osd cms devices made it possible to support highlighting of text or symbols basically you can now have a custom logo from Betaflight, but you've got to have 4.2 and you've got to have 10.7. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this out. And you're going to see right here on my desktop, I already have 10.7 because I've already followed my first video. So if you haven't done that, make sure you do that. The next thing is you are going to need some type of program to work with imaging. Unless you've already got your logo and it's already ready, then great for you. If you don't, you can download the one that I use and it's called GIMP. So I'm going to type in G-I-M-P. I will put a link to the download for this program if you don't have it so you know where to get it. And after it downloads, the first thing we need to do, or the first thing you need to know, is that your Betaflight OSD is required to be a certain size. And that size, I'm going to go ahead and list on the screen, and that is 288 by 72. You've got to have your image that size or it's not going to work. The next thing to do is to go ahead and drop your logo in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to Colors. I'm going to scroll down to Threshold and... Oh, Jeez, it didn't even give me a chance to explain it. It's already happened. All right, I'm going to hit OK. <laughs> and man, that looks cool. I actually should just keep my logo that way, huh? Doesn't that look good? I like that. All right, so what's important for you guys to know is that Betaflight OSD cannot read colors. It only understands three simple colors. You've got black, which is a color. You've got white, which is a color. And you've got green, which is actually going to uh, correspond to Betaflight as translucent lucent or uh, background or see-through or clear clear it's gonna be clear so that's what you've got there so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hit file hit export as and I'm gonna save it as drain man FPV OSD and I'm gonna save it on the desktop right here and I'm gonna hit export um, yeah export so it went ahead and it did its thing. So I can go ahead and I can close this out now. We'll hit discard changes. The next thing you need is you need to open up paint. So I'm going to go P-A-I-N-T. And every Windows computer, if you've got Windows and you've already got paint installed, if you don't, you're going to need to download it. So here we go. Now what we want to do is we want to take our logo and we are going to drop it in here. Boom. All right, pilot. so with our new logo in here, we need to go ahead and click resize. And in order to do that, we are going to click on our pixels. And then what we'll do is we will change this to 288 and we will hit OK. That'll bring it down to a reasonable size. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click resize again. I'm going to go back to pixels and I'm going to change this to 72. And there is a maintain aspect ratio. That's this right here. That is going to prevent your picture or logo from becoming some weird oblong shape or taking your actual uh, photo and making it out of shape, which won't be any fun to work with. So what we'll do is we'll leave that check marked. Although 192 is off, we rather have our vertical, which is harder to stretch, 
We will rather have that off than our horizontal, and then we'll just extend our horizontal later. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So now it is the correct amount of pixels. We will go back in, we'll zoom in a tad bit, and you kind of see how it's kind of distorted. And what we need to do is we need to go to our file, we need to go to properties, and we need to change this to black and white and hit OK. And now you'll see that that, <laughs> that got really ugly, but that's okay. Now we are on black and white. Now the fact that we have got rid of all those other colors because Betaflight won't allow it to work if those colors are not gone. So now that those, all those colors are gone, what we can do is we can go ahead and allow colors back in by going to properties and then clicking on color and hitting okay. And now we can allow colors back in. So in order to fix this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to home and we need to, uh, oh, now, I just messed up big time. I accidentally clicked and I somehow managed to, <laughs> to turn the whole thing black. If you get in this uh, spot, it's not the end of the world. All you've got to do is hold down control and then hit Z and it will undo whatever you just did. Okay, so now that we're back to the spot that we want to be in, what we need to do is we need to get our pixels correct. So looking down here, you'll see we are 192 by 72, and that is not okay. So in order to fix that, what we're going to do is we are going to grab this little tabby right here, and we are going to stretch this all the way to 288. Okay, so now we have the correct length, we are the correct height, we have the correct pixels, and we have the correct colors. What we need to do is hit select. We're gonna drag a big box over it just like this, and we'll move it to the center, so that way it doesn't look stupid. So, what do you need to do? Well, you don't want this big white box on your Betaflight OSD. So in order to fix that, what we're gonna do is we are gonna make it green. So in, how do I explain this? Betaflight only understands black, white, and green. Black is black, white is white, and green will actually be computed as translucent or clear or uh, no color. That is what it will see. It will allow you to have the background of whatever's on the screen by being clear. So in order to do that, if we were to look here, you would see that we have a dark green, we have a light green. Why can't we do those? Well, you can't do those because they are not a real green. And I don't think Betaflight will understand that as green. It will understand it as a bunch of colors mixed together to give you a dark green. And that's no good. So we're going to click on edit colors. And in here, you'll see where there's red, green, and blue. What we'll do is we will turn red to zero. We will turn blue to zero. And we will max green out to its maximum parameter, which is 255. And there you go. Now you are seeing green. And if I put this up here, you can see how this green is now a uh, real green. And we're going to add that to our custom colors. There it is right there. We'll hit OK. And then we'll make sure that we've selected them both and we will click on our paint bucket and boom. There you go, just like that. So now you have something that Betaflight is going to understand. You've got black, green, and uh, white, and that is what we need in order to do our logo. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and double check our pixels. We are 288 by 72. I'm gonna click File, I'm gonna click Save As, and we will save it as DMOSD. And we're gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask me if I wanna replace it. I'm gonna click yes because I no longer lead that. Any transparency will be lost if you save this picture. That's fine. We're gonna hit okay. And it is now saved. I'm gonna click the X and you'll see it right here on the screen. So we're ready to go. Now what we need to do is we need to get into Betaflight, Betaflight 10.7. And you need to plug in a quad that has Betaflight 4.2. If you have not done that, let me reiterate, you have to do that. So I will put a link to how to get both of those and you can follow along. Before you head over to your OSD, it's very important that you plug in your battery. On top of your flight controller, which is just a piece of PCB, you have a chip called an OSD chip. That chip does not get power from a five volt USB power supply. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to plug in a pack. I'm gonna do that now. All right, after you've powered up your quad, go ahead and click on OSD, and getting inside of here, you will see 
For some reason, it is not recognizing that I have put power on either that or this freaking flight controller is broken. Uh, let me go into the configurator. I will just uh, change my arming angle. Let's change that to 180. We'll save and reboot while I'm plugged in. And there we go. All right. So now that we're inside of the Betaflight OSD, I'm going to go ahead and click on the font manager. And in here is where you will be able to see custom image. So what's it asking for? It is asking for our size to be 288 by 72, which we've already discussed. And you also have to be green, black, and white. So looking at the Betaflight logo, you might remember powering up and seeing it. You don't see that big, ugly green. What you're seeing is the background. So that's why we did our image the way that we did our image. I'm going to click Select Custom Image. And then right on the background is the DMOSD. And I shall click Open. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. So what you're seeing here is... <laughs> yeah, it look good. Mm, pardon. Go ahead. Drop confetti. Uh, here we go. So what you're seeing is you're seeing some green check marks where it's telling us, yes, we agree. You have 288 by 72. You did listen to Drain Man, so you are correct. And then also you have a check mark by must contain green, black, and white. Hopefully yours did that. If you didn't follow along, then yours might not be doing that. And if that is the case, freaking start this video over and pay attention and do it right. And now that we've done that, we are going to go ahead and we're going to click upload. And it's doing its deal. And once it's all done, we should be set. All right. All right. So real quick, for my pilots that want to be able to see their logo every single time they arm, you do have a couple different options. And your options range to having it off, so that way you only see it on power up. You can have it so it's on, where it's always on every single time you arm your quadcopter, your logo is going to pop up. Or you can set it to first arming, which will be where the only the first time you arm, you will actually get to see your logo. And what's also cool is you can also set the amount of time in which your logo will be there. So if you kind of like having your logo there, you can just max out. I think it's at 50. So what we'll do is we'll type right here in the CLI command set OSD underscore logo. Uh, uh, it's already popping up this new beta flight. All right. So what you do is you go ahead and you go to OSD logo on arming and then you'll just hit an equal and we'll go on now if you want to do first arming just do first underscore arming like that but me I want it always on so I'm going to hit equals on and I'm going to press enter and as you'll see the command line accepted my command and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit set OSD underscore logo arming on duration equals and you've got a range between 5 and 50. I'm going to go with 50. I'm going to hit enter and then just simply hit save. So we've just restarted. So now what we need to do is power off the quad. I'm going to unplug it from beta flight and then I'm going to power up and see if it's actually working. All right, pilot. So what you're seeing here is you're just seeing my little screen. I am not going to load up my goggles just to show you this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in and right there you see the Drain Man logo. Did you see that? If you didn't see that, I'm going to show you one more time. So there it is. There is the Drain Man logo. Now we've got a couple issues here and that is that we have the cameras OSD, which is that stupid fox here and stuff you see at the bottom. We'll get rid of that. That battery uh, symbol that you're seeing, that is the uh, battery of the display that you're looking at. That is not on my OSD. I have not set up my OSD, but I have set up my logo. Now also when I arm and disarm, you will also see my logo. <laughs> All right, pilots, that was wicked cool. That was wicked fun. We now, when I power up and you're on my channel, you are going to know that it's me. And that's all that matters in this world. 
Is it not? Does anything else matter? All right, pilots, so now you guys know how to set up your custom logo. You know how to build it, and you know how to put it on the freaking drone, and you know why, how, and what you got to do in order to make that happen. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one.